What does your favorite anthropologist like to do in LA when it gets too hot? Cool off with a swim, of course. I was actually on my way to the J. Paul Getty Museum today, as I'm told there's an exhibit including some alchemists that I wanted to see. J. Paul Getty was a British-born oil tycoon named the richest living American in 1957 by Fortune magazine, while the 1966 Guinness Book of World Records named him the world's richest private citizen. So let's go have a look, shall we? Long shrouded in secrecy, alchemy is now recognized as the ancestor of modern chemistry. Alchemists were notorious for attempting to make synthetic gold, but their goals were far more ambitious, to transform and bend nature to the will of an industrious human imagination. For scientists, philosophers, and artists alike, alchemy seemed to hold the key to unlocking the secrets of creation. Alchemists' effort to discover the way the world is made have had an enduring impact on artistic practice and expression around the globe. Inventions born from alchemical laboratories include metal alloys for sculpture and ornament, oil paints, effects in glass making, and even the chemical baths of photography. The mysterious art of alchemy transformed visual culture from antiquity to the industrial age, and its legacy still permeates the world we make today. During the Middle Ages and the Renaissance, the manufacture of pigments and colored inks used for painting and writing manuscripts was part of the science of alchemy, a precursor of modern chemistry concerned with the transformation of matter. Moreover, some artists' interests went beyond the practical chemical operations involved in the production of pigments as they became involved in the more spiritual and theoretical aspects of alchemy. Alchemy employed a systematic set of symbols and technical terms commonly recognized by laboratory technicians and natural philosophers alike to indicate and record scientific operations, formulas, and ingredients. The physical world was composed of four elements, while the heavens included a fifth. Quintessence, or ether, is the fifth element that binds the four classical elements, water, fire, earth, and air together. It is the strongest and most powerful element, and in the late 19th century, physicists postulated that ether permeated through all throughout space. In Greek mythology, it was thought to be the pure essence that the gods breathed. As alchemists sought to isolate this quintessence, or fifth element, and incorporate it within medicine and elixirs. In the following short excerpt, Manly P. Hall describes the difference between chemistry and alchemy. And it seems that from a very far back, there has descended a double concept of chemistry. Physical chemistry having to do with those areas of knowledge which are now considered scientific, and spiritual chemistry, which was definitely a sacred art. In practice, what is the difference in these two systems? I think probably Paracelsus summarized this rather well when he pointed out that the alchemical transmutation was impossible unless the alchemist himself was in the process of transformation. He could not sit back with his bottles and test tubes and retorts and consider his art simply another way of advancing chemistry or a way of replenishing his own financial needs. So we find, as is today, that chemistry is largely dominated with the profit concept, the idea of wealth. 
We are making all kinds of chemical experiments for various reasons, some of them very good, some of them very dangerous, but always with a certain concept of return in material wealth for the good or the evil that is done. So that largely chemistry is a material art dominated by scientific inquiry and not in any way involving any necessary spiritual overtones. The chemist does not have to be a person of great faith. He does not have to have had a metaphysical experience. He does not need to believe in metaphysical or mystical procedures. He is simply working with physical tests and physical texts. The alchemist, on the other hand, is an entirely different type of person. In the history of alchemy, as it is descending to us, most of the alchemists were very pious people, deeply religious, and convinced that their advancement of science was a spiritual contribution to the well-being of society. The alchemist was, was concerned with the advancement of his own inner life. Jacob Bamey used a number of alchemical terms in his mystical writings, and these have been very confusing to modern students of his work. But actually, the use given by Bamey in most cases is probably the original intended usage, namely that it is all part of a great system of human regeneration. My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an author, producer, and anthropologist. Please like, share, and subscribe. Have a great Labor Day weekend, and I'll see you again soon.